All right, welcome once again, and it's your show. This is Crossfire. And every time when we come back here, we try as much as possible to get you updated on the goings on in our society. Nigeria is a very big, 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 big country. And at the same time, we have big, 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 big problems. And so, uh, to a very large extent, we are praying and looking forward to government responding really very, very positively to the yearnings of the people. Poor, the needy, the vulnerable, the disadvantaged, everybody seems to be crying. Welcome again to Crossfire on Channel 57, our terrestrial platform. And if you are watching us, you are watching us live, and it's live from our studio uh, in Lagos here. Ishama Gaine is with me in the studio. Ishama, good morning. Good morning How Nigeria. are you? I'm good. good morning, Andrews, and welcome to Crossfire today. All right, thank God it's Friday, and don't forget that on Crossfire, every Friday is Feedback Friday, and so we will bring you a lot of stories, um, but we will yet narrow down on a couple of them that are really very um, trending. And so let's quickly go on here and uh, make some information available to you, and we'll be running the show from the beginning to the end today with one of our very famous and um, regular guests on this show, and um, he's no other person but Professor. Junior, uh, uh, let me put it, I, I was going to say Martin Luther King, but I, I said, no, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just, um, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Chris uh, Walker, your junior. Uh, oh, okay, not Martin Luther King. <laughs> Chris Walker, your junior. All right, so Prof, welcome to Crossfire no, this Friday. Be, yeah. uh, thanks, um, I mean, we gave you a very late uh, info, um, and then you still try to make it. I mean, that's what we enjoy. You know, with the kind of relationship that we have with you. So, welcome once again. My pleasure God. to be here. Now, federal government says it has saved up to 1.4 trillion that would have been paid as subsidy to oil marketers. I mean, we'll talk about that. We'll see uh, because the question people are asking is that if we are making this much savings, then how come it's not translating to a better economy? You know, for Nigeria. So, the vice president yesterday, Professor Yemi Oshibadio, disclosed that. Uh, they, uh, talked about this in Lagos at the Chambers of Commerce and Industry during the 2016 Presidential Policy Dialogue session. So we talk more about that on the show. Now, the president yet yesterday came up saying we are tackling shortages with prudence. Now, President Muhammad Buhari says commitment to transparency and accountability is serving the country. I mean, in serving the country uh, is well, you know, on course, despite the shortages in resources. Now, we are broke. We're in recession. That was the last statement I heard uh, the Minister for Finance, uh, Kemi Adioshu, saying this to uh, um, lawmakers the last time she visited. And so while receiving the United Nations Population Fund Executive Director and UN Secretary General of the United Nations, Professor Babatunde uh, Oshotime, the president said it has been a very difficult year for Nigerians, and yet his government is not doing anything to create or to provide a palliative measure for the economy so that people at least can feed and live a normal life. Now, um, this is really very interesting. He will, I mean, you will remember when we talk about INEC or NEC. Maurice Uwu, Arishé, Oduaga, 63 others are pool of fenders. So a bold step towards sanitizing the electoral process was taken yesterday with the indictment of 66 uh, individuals and organizations allegedly invo involved in uh, pool crimes in 2007 and 2011. So maybe finally, uh, as we'll be talking today even on Crossfire, yeah. really and truly, uh, we'll be talking about delayed justice. Why is justice delayed really and truly for uh, very big Nigerians? Let me put it that way. I don't, you know, they have big names, they occupy big positions, and at the same time, you know, we, ha we have a lot of... Uh, Crimes that they have committed or uh, allegations hanging on them, and they are still, I mean, nothing seems to be happening. Let's give them more stories. It's Feedback Friday. Reform Niger Delta Avengers. That's what um, Jonathan is, is saying. But meanwhile, while everything is geared towards ensuring that there's a proper engagement of the Niger Delta Avengers, we have information in the public space that we have all other groups springing up, you know, as much as the government is making effort 
to engage the few ones that have been uh, identified, but we have it reliably told that we have more groups that are, I mean, or more uh, youths that are regrouping and forming other uh, groups and, and making it difficult for the president to deal with. Maybe because they feel that now that, that the government is ready to talk, it's high time that they all took their share. And um, anyway, before we go on our first, um, uh, on our first break, let's quickly tell you that uh, Boko Haram, that have been technically, supposedly technically, um, you know, uh, won defeated. or probably uh, disarmed or, uh, you know. But defeated. Yes, yeah, defeated. We still have a lot of activities around them. We'll go on a short break now. When we come back, we'll go into a few more stories and then we throw a lot of analysis on some of these stories. We'll be right back after this. Back in thanks for staying with us and it's still crossfire with Dako Anishoma. We have Professor Chris Onwokobe Jr. in the studio and we will be running the show together today. Uh, still talk about stories. We have uh, in the public domain that yet another group sprang up, uh, you know, not too long in the Niger Delta. Niger Delta Greenland Justice Mandate. And, and um, yesterday we were told that they carried out a very dastardly attack on some of the um, pipelines installations in the Hopper Niger Delta region. And that's to tell you that this story is not, you know, is not fictitious and um, it's not anything to, to, to joke about. Uh, the government is busy, you know, engaging the popular ones. And then we have many other ones, you know, springing up at the same time. Now, federal government uh, rolled out an emergency economic measures, maybe to probably cushion the effect of their fight against corruption, because, I mean, that seems to be the main agenda of this current administration. Now, Ishama, we can go on and on and on and on and on and on, but our major focus today is actually, first of all, the padding of the budget. Mm -hmm. Now as if the padding was not enough, as if all the evidence is made available by Habdu, you know, Dubrin, yeah. uh, is I not enough. Um, as if a lot of um, people who came out really, uh, you know, very strong to condemn the act of the padding uh, is not enough. We have a Dogara coming out to, to saying, I don't understand what you people are talking about. And then the I, EFCC I, 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 and yeah, ICPC cannot. And he's saying cannot. that the EFCC and ICPC <laughs> cannot even prove him because I enjoy immunity you know, and all of that. Anyway, we'll be talking about that. But let's just take it one step at a time. 1.4 trillion is about a third, less than a third of the, uh, of the budget, the appropriation uh, bill, uh, budget for 2016 by the Buhari-led administration. And meanwhile, this has been saved for, I mean, since the regulation of the, down, uh, you know, of the downstream in the oil sector have been done, and government is coming out reliably to say 1.4 trillion has been saved. Does this translate to, uh, to a better life for Nigerians? I mean, okay, fine, we seem to have moved on. It's 145, it's 140 in some places, and all of that. Does this in any way show that this government have a plan or an agenda to actually transform Nigeria's economy? If the government has an agenda to transform the economy, yes. If the government can make the economy better, yes. Is the government doing everything it should at this point to make the economy better? Yes. Can b more be done? Yes. I, I, I think that what we must note first is the fact that uh, we're where we are today, because there's a level of prudence and um, decency, if you like, responsibleness and responsiveness in governance. That's why uh, the, whether you call it um, inflationary state, whether you call it recession, whether you call it the economic crunch, hasn't swallowed up Nigeria. Remember that uh, about eight months before the last election, the former CBN governor, Chukuma Soludo, talked about the fact that whether Buhari wins or Jonathan wins, the next government is going to be in trouble because right. the economy was bare-chested. And then, as you and I talk, there's a massive, and we all know, a massive uh, slide in global oil prices, just picking up gradually, and that affected our economy. But I want to say here that those funds that have been saved are what the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria yesterday said 
will be plowed into stimulating the economy. I, so I want to say... Sorry to interject you. Eventually, we are saying that the deregulation or the removal of subsidy is actually a blessing in this... It case. has saved us monies. Okay. Yes, it has saved us monies. And almost all over the world, uh, Venezuela is doing that to resuscitate and revive the economy. Angola is doing that. Angola is the highest oil producing country now in Africa. They're doing the so same thing to stimulate the economy. So you are comfortable that government is busy saving and, and the making money, of but people are citizens. suffering. No, look at what happens, Dr. Okay. You have to, you don't, you don't generate and spend. You have to generate, save and spend in strategic right. and on strategic sectors. It is no longer a bazaar. It shouldn't be. It was the bazaar of the past that put us where we are now. Now you have to do strategic investments, strategic spendings, and I do sincerely think, like I've always said, it is not a microwave. It took, I'll give you a practical instance. Barack Obama inherited an economy in recession. In recession yes. He encouraged, inherited an economy with homes being sold out, mortgages failing, unemployment was, unemployment was at about 4.5 million. And in the first one year, six months, Barack Obama had more job losses. But today, as you and I talk, it moved from 3 million uh, jobs that were lost to 4.5 million jobs in the first one and a half year of Barack Obama. But as you and I talk, America has generated about 9.5 million jobs. What you do is strategic investments. What you do is shoring up your economy, building investor confidence. And I do sincerely believe that it is not so much of a microwave. You don't chuck in and chuck out. Much as that is the truth, I do sincerely think that now you're seeing government engage the economic sector, talking with the business people, building confidence. You, you saw the, the, the richest man in Africa with the vice president and several other people talking about how to boost the economy. And he did say that, yes, the news is saying that South Africa is overtaking us, but Nigeria is still the biggest. I do sincerely think that beyond semantics, beyond the words that we throw up in the public space, this government has shown political will. This government has shown a resolve to ensuring that we have new paradigms in business. And I do sincerely think that with time, and very shortly too, things will pick up. Okay. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, uh, Dapo, please. No, yeah. Just give me this. Um, Professor Chris, now a lot of Nigerians, even some of our callers yesterday, called and, and lamented on the state of the economy. Now, it's, people are saying, people on the street are saying that it seems the government of Nigeria is oblivious of of the sufferings and the yearnings of the people. You look at the, the economy today, it's not favorable. Yes, Nigeria lost the largest economy to South Africa. But the issue here is, is the Nigerian economy in itself healthy? Can it favor the average Nigerian? Can it favor SME businesses, small, medium-sized businesses? Let me say this. Not true. It no, may no, be, it, it may be the largest. It may, no, no, no. it may be the largest, but is it really helping the Nigerian individual get to that place of rest which this government promised? And a lot of people are asking and wondering why do we still have the current CBN you know, governor still seated there? Because a lot of people are saying that it seems like he lacks policy direction, he lacks focus on certain things he should do to move the economy forward. I, Don't you think so? I am not an economist, but I study the political amphitheater and the economy. I am not a finance expert, but I read the news, and I know that it hasn't been said that you cannot pass a judgment on the shape of a house if you are not a civil engineer an or an architect. Mm -hmm. So I can say first that the presidency and Mr. President and the economic team knows why. Um, the CBN governor, MFLA, is still there. But allow me to talk about the SMEs. I think that in the, government, in the budget of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, there have been provisions to reinvigorate, to fund. And the Bank of Indust Industries is working on that already. They're reaching out to several people to fund SMEs and support low businesses. That's point number one. Point number two, does the government know that there's hunger in the land? Yes. Mr. President has admitted that these are very difficult times. The Vice President has said that these are very difficult times. Anybody who chooses to paint the reality otherwise is not fair to Nigeria. I know that I feel the pain and the pangs. 
I know that you feel it. I know that everybody understands that our economy is bare-chested. But I do sincerely believe that together, all over the world, when it, an economy is in recession, a people unite, aggregate at a place where, together, collective effort, we move the country forward. And that's why there is profoundly an effort at diversifying the economy, so that uh, when bombs are detonated in the Niger Delta, the economy does not totally crumble, you know. And I wish that our brothers and sisters in the Niger Delta would prevail on the militants to keep the peace, you know. Okay. But beyond that, just last month, you are aware that uh, in the country, the funding of the, uh, the states and the federal government came from, 70 percent of it came from the non-oil sector, which obviously means that diversification is, is paying off, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that consistent programmatic, consistent government effort at ensuring that we inspire confidence in the business sector will help the economy grow. But beyond that, you know that energy is key for small businesses. So That's I do sincerely true. believe that uh, the Minister of Power works in housing, like he said in the last town hall meeting, that they reinvigorate energize and make that but sector you know more what, effective but, but and But a lot of Nigerians no, are also wondering that why is it that the Minister for Power is not even looking to non-oil related sources of energy generation to also, you know, at least it, It's taking move, us away. Exactly, because, I mean, because I it seems, it's it taking seems us away actually, from, the, no, no, from our thoughts. No, all, all of these yeah. are lined up together because it seems that even if we're having the issue of of bombings, of, of, of blowing up pipeline installation in the Niger Delta region. Certain countries shouldn't be, be complaining about it. Look at Morocco, for example. They are making, they generating a whole lot of energy, and come 2020, they will be distributing huge, you know, megawatts of energy to European nations. No, but Ishama, inter interestingly, I'd say and to Morocco you, as basically you, so is that, like so a desert. Don't get it wrong. Desert so land. we don't get it wrong. Uh, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing did say, that there is a major effort at removing the energy sector from total dependence on the oil and gas sector. And that's where he talked about the Mambila. Yeah. He talked about the hydro yes. diversification to major hydro. And then they are looking and at solar. the possibility of coal, solar. And I, I do sincerely think that every true Nigerian, every person who truly cares about this country realizes and understands the fact that without power, you can't power the So economy. the issue is when will all this happen? Are we going to wait to 2019 uh, anyway, to begin to um, see this happen? I, I, I for pray, SME pray, businesses to grow. Uh, anyway, I pray it happens sooner <laughs> than later. Okay. Now, let, let's talk about the amnesty program of the, of the government. Eventually, I think federal government seems to be settling down for uh, a more a, a robust form of dialogue with the uh, Niger Delta Avengers, even though we have a lot of groups springing up. And then those who probably left their former groups are regrouping to form another one. Mm -hmm. Now that government is beginning to, you know, uh, bring money for settlement, they want to continue and all of that. Now, amnesty, is this the solution to the problem in the Niger Delta? The way the government is going about it, is this the solution to the Niger Delta? That ball. Interestingly, when our former president, may God bless his soul, um, Umar Yado had tinkered with the amnesty. I was invited to deliver a paper, and I met them in, in committee in Abuja. And I did tell them that uh, money for weapons will not solve the Niger Delta problem. Money in exchange for peace will not solve the Niger Delta problem. That what will solve it is actually turning the Niger Delta into a huge construction site. That way, mothers and fathers will look at their young ones and say, Ufoma, no bomb pipeline. You know, since the government don't they build this, don't they do this, you know. You find out that the parents will begin to engage the people, traditional leaders will begin to engage the people, mm. and then the society entirely will say to the boys, violence does not pay. Government is committed to developing that space. I think that is the first way, the, 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 the way to go. But you know what? In this present dialogue, which so many of us have said, it's what government must do. I do sincerely think that we must remove the economic and the financial incentive and tell the people that we're not paying you money. We're going to develop that space. We're going to build you schools. We're going to build you medical centers. We're going to build you 
everything that you need for good life. Make that the summon bonum, make that the substance. If you make that the issue, you find out that less uh, militant groups will emerge. The reason newer groups are emerging is because they think that, oh, once you dialogue with government, what are you going to get? Money. You're going to get money in exchange. So some are saying we have to start giving the Nigerian government trouble so that they can include us in the amnesty, quote unquote, yes, project. Yeah, I, I, so I, I, think, I yeah. think that, Paul, that what government must do is to say to the people, yes, we're ready to develop your space, but we're not going to exchange. We're not going to make new billionaires out of gun runners. We're not going to make new billionaires out of militants. We're not going to make new billionaires out of renegades. We're going to develop your space. And I do sincerely think that that is the way to water the tree of peace I, I, Is and it progress. a coincidence that um, the, they didn't promise peace in the Niger Delta if President Muhammad Buhari became the president of Nigeria? And, and eventually, I mean, he turned out to, to win the election and is the president of Nigeria today. And then we do not have any form of peace or harmony in the Niger Delta. And uh, a few days ago, I don't know how true that is, that some of the, um, you know, uh, yes, the, <laughs> some of the reformed uh, Niger Delta Avengers guys, the R-A-N-D, mm -hmm. they said they are reformed, mm -hmm. made information available that their grand patron is former president. Good luck, Jonathan. Dakwa, let me say this. I, I try not to be involved in conspiracy, conspiracy theories, theories. Theor theorems. And I try not to, I try always not to uh, make conjectures. I have read it. I have listened to that diatribe. I have heard Mr. Former, former President of the Federal Republic try to disown them and say he knew nothing, he knows nothing, he is not associated by any means with them. And I have seen the same group come out to say, oh, we didn't tell Sahara reporters this. Those are within the confines of conjectures. Mm. You ask me, what do I think? If he did not directly support them, his body language perhaps supported them. That's point number one. But statements now, that now, was now, made. Now, now, now let me, let me, when, when, I, when I get somewhere, okay. you. Now, the, the Niger Delta Avengers uh, emerged because they felt that my brother from the Niger Delta lost an election. The name suggests that. Yeah, I don't know why we're agent. going too far. <laughs> You ask yourself, what are you avenging? What are you avenging? <laughs> what, why suddenly did you become Avengers? Mm -hmm. What grieve and grievance are you avenging? Exactly. You know, so the point is, the name suggests that, oh, we're angry and we're avenging the defeat of our brother in the last election. That's point, point number two. But I want us to look beyond that. Now, Jonathan has come out to say, I believe that what Nigeria is not negotiable. I believe that we have to uh, make this country work because our greatness is our size. I think that's salutary. Now, let's move from the known to the unknown. The known is that he's saying, maybe he's repentant now, okay. uh, that they're talking to their uh, brothers in the, in the Niger Delta, that he has engaged the jaw leaders and they're talking to the boys, and that that is why we're going to have relative peace. Beautiful. Let's move from there. And then tell him to continue to talk to them and then tell him to impress it on them that the more they blow up oil pipelines, they mess up the flora and the fauna of the Niger Delta the space first. The yes. They make the, the, the territory, like Uluwibiri, uninhabitable, yep. and then they make the life, life expectancy in that region terrible. You see, all these three affects the people first. And then before the economy of the Nigerian enterprise atrophies. So I, I think that the, the, the chief thing we must do is those who are applauding the Niger Delta Avengers and those who are blowing up pipeline lose sight of the fact that the chief beneficiaries, quote unquote, of the rot are the same people Still who have been be dead dealt dead with savagely. Yes. The collateral damage that oil spillage, the pipeline explosions, Causes the Niger Delta far outweighs what it causes the Nigerian enterprise. Because, that boy, as you and I talk, the world is looking at clean energy. Mm -hmm. America is talking about possibilities of not buying oil from anywhere in the next 10 years because they want to ride cars on gas, on, on mm -hmm. ben benzene, water. on <laughs> water. They want to use electricity to, to drive cars. So, when we talk about this, our brothers must realize that first, the lives and the safety of the people in Niger Delta should be primary. Mm -hmm. And then second, 
allowing the Nigerian enterprise space to develop that region should be the chief determination, chief expectation of the people. So dialogue must be encouraged by all and sundry. Georgia over World War should be the anthem in the Niger Delta. And then Mr. President, indeed, and those who are negotiating with these people, must make them understand that no longer will government give you money in exchange for weapons. Government will give you development in exchange for peace. Now, when you say development, please, I recall also that um, during the elections, the APC talked about the Petroleum Industry Bill and said that it was going to look into it and make sure that they, they pass it speedily because the basic, the fundamentals, the idea, the brain behind the PIB bill is also to bring peace and development to the Niger Delta region, which coincides also with some of the agitations by some of the militants. Why is the APC sleeping on the passage of the PIB bill? I think that the world isn't sleeping. What is the National Assembly? doing in terms of the PIB, point number one. Then point the number two, the, the, no, headship, point number the, two, the of, National the Assembly, because I've been in the press, the PIB, the let's, let's, let's look at the PIB. No, 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 it's, it's a national deal. It's a national deal. It's a national deal. The headship of the National Assembly are members of the APC. It's not a party bill. The headship of the APC. It's a national bill. It's a national bill. The headship of the National Assembly are members of the APC. Without doubt. And I recall also that during the elections, the APC talked about the National Assembly and members of the APC. And I recall also that this was a fundamental campaign promise to the Nigerian people All right, still talking about the, the IP. Without I mean, doubt. Um, uh, professor, uh, still talking about the PI bill. We will go on a short break now. When we come back, we will narrow down that and discuss it in full. We'll be right back after this. Don't go nowhere. All right, welcome back. And it's still Crossfire with Dapa Anisha. Our professor, Chris Wobkobia Jr., is here in the studio. Now, we're talking about the PIB, the, B, the PI bill. Petroleum exactly. industry bill. Industry yeah. bill, before we went on that break. Now, the point here is, I mean, uh, duly and uh, uh, pointedly raised by Ishioma. The bill is supposed to help regulate the petroleum um, the oil and gas industry, yeah. let me put it that way. Activities also. And, uh, yes, and then it will eventually touch the IOC, the NOC, and even the downstream. It's captured. Almost everything from, from top to bottom is captured in the bill. Now, um, why do you think this bill, almost up till now, I mean, is still not being treated or passed or uh, read? I think before President Goodluck Jonathan left, it, it passed the first reading, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Let me, yeah. sh let me shock you, Dagbo. <laughs> let me shock you, Dagbo. And you're going to be surprised at what I'm about to say. It was one of those bills that uh, the National Assembly at the twilight the of the... 700 and... Yes. Passed but... in 40, 40 minutes or so, about, yeah. about 67 Seven. bills that just went in like that. And... You ask yourself, how, how would you pass a bill into law when you haven't gone through the processes mm -hmm. and the stages? So that's why it's assumed and that we do not have a petroleum industry law. Now, as you and I talk, what is important? I concede to the fact that Ishiyama's argument, which of course is that the party in power is the APC, and the APC should push for the passage of that bill. I was privileged to be at a forum with the Minister of State for Petroleum, where he said that after the deregulation, his major challenge is to ensure that the Petroleum Industry Bill is passed into law. And that's what they have triggered up. I do sincerely think that at this point, where we have a major challenge is with the National Assembly. Okay. The National Assembly must rise to the ante, must rise to the challenge of now. Interestingly, too, uh, for those who had fears, as you and I talk, uh, th there is news that oil has been found in some of our sister northern uh, states. Exactly. So I think it is for the good of the enterprise, the good of the country, the good of Project Nigeria, and the good of the oil sector that we have a petroleum industry bill that will contemplate and interrogate every issue within that sector. But eventually the presidency is of the opinion that if the Niger Delta, because of the oil there, will not allow government to probably make revenue from it, you want it, you want to have it, you want to use it, you want to sell it by your, I mean, use it on your own, sell it, 
get the money, do whatever you want to do with the money. So let's shift attention to other um, uh, part of the no, no, of the no. country. But, but you see, that's selfish. No, oh, no, yeah. that was, I would tell you that is selfish. No, what, no why, why is it on, selfish? On, on they don't want government. Order. They do not want government okay. to do the needful Dapo, in the Niger no, Delta. Dapo, guess so what? let's go to the north. The oil is there. No, no, no. Let, we, we, Dapo, yeah. and let me tell you, on crossfire, when we talked about this last year, I guess, I looked at it and I took, okay, a time will come in Nigeria where we will begin to look at we look aside or we look at the other natural resources and that's minerals that's we have. Now. Yeah. Now, it's happening yeah, now. Yeah. And I remember on Crestway we proposed, how about a you know, a resource and extractive industry bill Instead that will of cover the PI, PI exactly that will cover both petroleum Maybe and other do sources. Like PI bill. Exactly, other natural resources. Now if the government of Nigeria is truly sensitive to the yearnings of the Nigerian people and is actually measuring development also, they will have considered this. Even if they do not want to push for the PIB, you know, PIB, yeah. they will have looked at the extractive industry bill. Which would have included a P. Exactly. Uh, which have included and which will also products too. protect the interests of residents or indigenous of host communities where some of these resources are found. So that tomorrow we will not have a, a Niger Delta scenario happening in another part uh, of the I country. Can I say this? Why is it say that the government is not proactive on these things? It's your man, an extractive industries bill. Nice. But I ask a, a simple question. Why can't we just do the right things and properly? I do not think that there's anything wrong with having a solid minerals extracting industries bill. I do not think that there's anything wrong with having a petroleum industries bill. I think that what we need is a political will. What we need is to push and nudge the National Assembly to do what is right. I have always held escapist roots in national dialogue. One of those is people have said that since the local governments are not functioning well, disband them. And I wonder, if you disband everything that's not functioning well, then so simply, sooner than later, we'll start disbanding women because many marriages are in trouble. I, I think that the, hmm. the, the reality of now is to see how we solve the problems. Yeah. Okay. You know, All right. if a tree isn't bearing good fruit, see well, whether we can manure it. See whether we can manure it. Okay. See whether we can prune it. See whether we can help it. If it doesn't, then you talk about taking it out. All right, let's take I, some I think calls. That, I think that that's exactly what we want All to right. do today. Akanji, good morning. Akanji, good morning. Hello, Akanji, are you there? Yes, yes. Good, good morning. morning. How are you today? I'm fine. Can, can you turn down? Can you turn down the volume of your TV set, please? Okay. Go ahead and make your contributions, please. Yeah, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Talk to us. Yes, I just want to talk to the, sorry, Mr. Professor Chris Wakobe Jr. Yeah, Professor Chris. Uh, now, Nigeria, uh, well, I think uh, people are suffering in Nigeria for the last and, and, and a year plus now. Uh, but, uh, and they are telling people to, to keep calm. And now, let's forget about that. Now, in the Niger Delta, they said they are bombing, they are bombing, uh, they are Avengers bombing here and there. Now, why, is, why is it not happen? Now, in the in the in the presence of uh, uh, President Buhari, why is it not happen in the in the former President Guido Jonathan Hade? Why is it not happen? Why is it not this president that is it not happen? Mm. <laughs> okay, fantastic, Akadi. Let's take the next call. We would... Thank you. All right, we'll hello. Good morning, Uzo. <laughs> hello, Uzo. Hello, good morning, Uzo. All right, let, let, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, Uzo, please try and call us back. So Which what? one? Yeah. Like we noted, the name suggests that the new bombings is, an, is a vengeful it's not is a revanchist, yeah. Yeah. is uh, a revenge-prone operation that they are avenging the loss by Jonathan in March 2015. And I think that's what we all agree. And that's why we're saying that it is wrong. That's why we're saying that Mr. former President Jonathan should have come out earlier to say to his boys and our people in the Niger Delta to keep the peace. I, I do sincerely think that running away from that reality is like uh, being unfair and attempting to sham Abraham. 
I, I know that what we must do as a people is say the truth. And the truth is that the leaders of the Niger Delta, traditional leaders, political leaders, and leaders of civil society must prevail on our brothers and sisters in the Niger Delta to understand that not only is the collateral damage of oil pipeline explo explo explosions huge on their people, but it affects the entire republic, okay. and that we need peace to move Nigeria but Because of time, we need to go now. Um, uh, Prof, you are very giving to, um, to grammar. You are very giving to a lot of grammar, and I know you will, it will be very easy for you to, to, to help to define what padding is, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I am familiar with the word pad, you know, and, and, but this time around, the, 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 the usage and the operation and the interpretation, you know, uh, it's really, you know, um, it's really going into, uh, into, uh, into record that we have a very major, major problem because our children probably in the future will grow to understand that some of these words exist and these are ways to use them. If, if, you, if you get what I'm try, trying Dark, to say. Dark ball. <laughs> Dark ball. We don't just... Let, before we take your response, let's take uh, this call. Hello, Pat. Hello, Pat. Yes. Good, good morning. morning, Pat. How are you? Fine, thank you. Great. Good to have you on the show. Let's take your contribution. Okay. Hello, Pat. Yes, what I'm asking is this. Can like you go... Like the professor said... Yes. ...that the Niger Delta they should equip them and develop their place. Why not the government at the present do what they're supposed to do? After all, they themselves, they travel out and know what, how the countries they travel to develop their own places. Why then, why not come here and do it? They know exactly what the Niger Delta people are suffering. They really know their needs. Why not answer them? So that we should move forward in this very country. That's my question. Right. Thank you, Pat. Uh, what, what Pat is simply saying is that we, we, you have given the Niger Delta people room to yes. even, if everything is working out, even if the president, their, I mean, their own son lost the election, they probably would not have any, any, you know, cause to, to want. But uh, yeah, hold on, Prof. Prof. Uh, Prof. Michael, good morning. Hello, uh, Michael. Uh, Hello, please. Good I morning. want to ask Mr. Chris a question. There is a comment that Mr. Chris made on uh, on air just now. Okay. Uh, please, Mr. Chris, are you trying to say that is a uh, is a uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, former president, Good Lord Jonathan, that is uh, is, uh, is sponsoring the Niger Delta Avengers? He talked about that. He, uh, he debunked say. that. He debunked he that earlier say. on the show. That he, he, the information is out there, but that does not indicate. But he's saying that because the name is Niger Delta Avenger, what are they avenging? Is it because Good Luck Jonathan lost the election? I mean, he's, he's been wondering. Talking, he's been, yeah, he's he didn't wondering. say that. Please, 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 please. You hello, cannot hello. shave, you cannot shave my hair in my absence. I, I'm here. Let me, oh, on, let me address him. I think Michael is still online. Hello, Michael. Please, Mr. Chris, when you are speaking on air, please watch what you said so that you will not put people on pressure. You are, what you are just saying now is you are, you are trying to tell Nigerians that the past leaders of, of this government, of, of uh, this country, has, have not worked well. It I didn't see what APC has done. Out of all their policies, you know, why, why they, are campaign, campaign, uh, written, they have not done even a single one. And you people, you as, as, as an APC spokesman, that is what I believe. You are, you are one of the APC spokespersons. And you are just trying to put Nigerians on, on pressure. Please, correct your, correct your speech so that people should not, should, should not agitate for what they do not... Uh, uh, okay, uh, thank uh, you very uh, much. Thank you very much, Michael. I mean, wow. before, before we take anything from Prof, so that it won't sound as if Prof is trying to defend himself. No, I'm not. On the show, I'm not, hold on, Prof. I, I'm, the, I'm the anchor. Okay. I'm the anchor on the show. <laughs> now, um, the point is that, Prof, I asked a very simple question, that could it be that the former president had um, any uh, inclination to what, what is happening in the Niger Delta? And I remembered what you said was no, and, but... The point is that it's already in the public domain. Even some of the reformed, the, the, the repentant, uh, you know, uh, Avengers said that 
Their grand patron is even pres former exactly. President Goodluck Jonathan. They say. All this information are in the public domain. You still debunked it that because it is even out there, does not show that he is, he is involved in any way. That was my simple take, so yes. that you don't defend me or make it. <laughs> my simple take is the witch cried last night. The child dies this morning. And tell me who killed the child. Mm. You know, I, and then tell me who the Avengers are avenging and what they are avenging. And then, you see, I don't pretend about Ustaz, Utman and Fodio said in 1805, conscience is an open wound, mm -hmm. only truth can heal it. In my discussion here, I haven't said that Jonathan is sponsoring them. He knows what he had, and perhaps uh, he had with the PDP ear what the APC spokesperson said, <laughs> you know. But the truth is, and I say this without fear of querulous critics, if Jonathan and the, our brothers in the Niger Delta, I'm from the Niger Delta, had spoken up early enough, perhaps our pipelines will be safer. Mm -hmm. If they have spoken out early enough, perhaps our economy won't be the way it is today. If they have spoken out early enough, perhaps we'll have a much more peaceful Niger Delta. And so I don't, no apologies to what uh, the last caller thinks. The truth is that the time has come to move our country forward. I am a Nigerian. I care about my children. I care about how school fees are paid. I care about how the medical sector affects everybody. Yeah. And the time has come for us to begin to think about Nigeria and not APC or the PDP. Sure. I believe in Nigeria. And the truth is that if those who lost elections in 2015 began early enough to reach out to their people to say, do not bomb anything, and if Mr. President reached out like the father of the nation strongly to say we all belong together and we can move this country forward, we'll have a much more peaceful nation. And that's exactly my interest. My reason of sitting here is to tell Nigerians that there is still hope, that change is not microwave, and that we can nudge and urge leadership to responsible and responsive conduct. Okay. Um, um, well prof, said. I mean, <laughs> let, let, let's move on here. I mean, I, I, I believe you. You, you cleared the air on that. But before we take okay. more okay, then. from you, we we'll have go on a short break. We'll go on a when short we break. Back, we will we'll be right back. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, and thank God it's Friday. In any moment from now, we will be, uh, you know, going off the show. But we still have a couple of minutes, and we have more stories to talk about on the show. We see that Professor Chris will work with Virginia in the studio, and Ishoma is still very much uh, Tanda Gidibari in the studio, wow. too. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you know what I mean. Now, Prof, what is padding? That part, when I was growing... What is padding? Why padding? Who padded? What was padded? Uh, I mean, because Why the, 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 the word padding is trending. Yeah, no, yeah. let, let, me, let me tell you, <laughs> okay. uh, when I was growing up, you know, I, I was blessed to be the first in a house of six girls. Hmm. So with all sense of respect and apologies to my sisters, when I, when I was growing up, I, 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 I had padding and pads. I, I just knew it had to do with something that happens uh, monthly, and they were, it's the grace of God on them exactly. because they give birth to children and all that. Now, now that I'm an adult, they're changing it. It's giving birth to more monies. <laughs> more monies through subterfuge. Oh. More monies through deceit. More monies through corruptive tendencies. Mm -hmm. And then some are telling us that padding is not an offense because it's not known to the law. But I tell you, if you want to pursue the issues of padding, it raises several criminal uh, uh, issues and uh, very Corrupt serious policies, issues. Yeah. I'll give you a practical instance. You can find in padding forgery. You can find in padding inflation of budgetary in that, that sabotage. You can find in, in pardon corrupt enrichment. Mm -hmm. And so you have criminalities shrouded in one new name, pardon. And I do sincerely think that, I um, agree that Dogara is a lawyer. But I also must state that the sensibility and the conscience and the mindset and the moral uh, margins of our country must be reworked. You don't look in the face of a country and a people and tell them that uh, there is no certain 
like pardon to our law, yeah, but and that I, you have I not done anything. Yeah, you know. did you know, give out a lot of evidences, facts, Talk about 2, and he's, he's contracts. still speaking. He is 2, still speaking. Contracts even where up to yesterday, he had were sneaked in. Exactly. Ishoma. But yeah, these are evidence. Sneaked he in. has dropped copies with the police. He has dropped copies with the ICPC and the EFCC. The issue is, when? How long should we wait for the EFCC no, no, frankly, to speak? Aware. To spring into action. Frankly, I'm aware. No, but frankly, I'm aware that the EFCC. What can they do? No, frankly, I'm aware that the EFCC has invited, uh -huh. invited, that's where to start uh, and then he Jibrin. refused. And then no, Jibri was there, and I'm sure that no, I'm obviously about, sooner I'm than about later, Mr. Dogara. Dogara will have to go because he does not enjoy any immunity against investigation and prosecution. Known to our law, the only two uh, major offices that enjoy immunity is the office of the president and the vice president, and at the state level, the office of the you know, governor uh, and the deputy governor. Unfortunately, so, uh, you know, especially our public offices, they don't follow. They do, some of them do not even know how some of these um, uh, investigative bodies, you know, operate. For instance. EFCC does not spring into action. They don't do anything until you are petitioned. Mm -hmm. They must receive a written petition from you before they can do anything. Yeah, he went, the Jibri granted, has dropped all that. Oh, no. He has not dropped before. His, he has no, dropped no, his no, petition. No, but Jibri sent in the petition. Yes, he has. Finally, it's mm -hmm. sent in. It's no, but the issue finally. now is, no, there, there was this news in the, you know, in the public space that the presidency debunked and rubbished Honorable Jibri's allegations. That's not true. true. Why, true why, why was Jubri? No, that, why true. did Jubri start? Yes, why why did he come Enna? after he was removed no, as the chairman no, of the, no, no, of no, the no, appropriation no. committee? Why, why was it then that he started talking that there was pardon, there was this, they did this, they did that? He himself should go to jail. Here, here again, you're running into a moral ambush. I mean, let me tell you, you're running into a moral ambush. It does not matter to me whether. He waited until he was removed. What matters to me is that Zeitgeist, <laughs> the spirit of the time, has made him speak out. It's the spirit uh, of the time. The spirit of the time <laughs> has made him speak out. And so many people are going to continue to speak because the God that the Nigerian people pray to is not dead. Mm -hmm. The God who watches over malnourished children in this country the is not poor, dead. The, vulnerable the God who watches over our poor and incapacitated mothers and fathers is not dead. People who he, are dying he's alive due and to is lack of pushing and nudging services. this vehicle onwards. And I am confident that so many Jibrils and Jibrins will begin to sink soon. I am confident that collectively we can make the president and the institutions play their role, and effectively so, to the good of our country. But let me say this. Our president has not come out to say that Dugara is innocent. If so why, why was said, APC let, let me, let me, let Why me, did no. APC wade into the matter? Why, 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 party, why, why did the party? Yeah, as no, no, a party, party, the party, I read, I read a copy, I read a copy of the letter affair. from the party that the party is looking into the details, and that whilst they look into the details, the, both parties should stop media interviews. Obviously. <laughs> Jibril had gone to the EFCC. Why, why he had you? gone to the ICPC. Yeah. <laughs> Matters had been reported. Exactly. Let the investigative agencies, the media is not the investigative agencies. Let the investigative agencies do their work. Why is the party maintain some measure of decorum? And I don't think there's any. And you know what happened? Him. One of the members of the House of Reps came out some time ago. I've forgotten his name. Uh, he's an outer man. Well, he's a northerner. And he came out to say, we all agreed when we came in, we all agreed that there was no going to be party. <laughs> that we all agree. And the pardon has been ever since. Since 1999. Everybody in those house, both the lower and the upper since chamber, all of them are. Sadly. I mean, it's sa unfortunate. Sadly. And that, that was perhaps why the former, uh, and much more former president, uh, Obasanjo, said that there is massive criminality in the National but, Assembly. But, but then they turned back to him and then said, Oh, but you allowed it first. Uh, you gave, we, you, some, at some point, you brought monies into the chamber for, uh, for us to pass a uh, constitutional yeah, amendment yeah, to yeah. allow for a third term. You know, I think that the time has come your for la, us your to last begin. Now, Prof, yeah, I think that the time has come for us to begin to put country first in our discourse mm -hmm. and in our dialogue. I know that some still feel bitter about the last election. Some would rather see Nigeria from the prism of the PDP 
Some will rather see Nigeria from the prism of the APC. But the truth is that our children who are in school, our mothers and our fathers see they Nigeria as Nigeria. They are not exist. partisan. And so we must begin to think about how we move this country forward. All right. All right. I am opposed to conflict and violence in the Niger Delta. I believe that as a people, we can make that space safer. I am opposed to partisan conflicts. I think that together we can make this country responsible and responsive. Because those who steal our monies are indiscriminate of parties. Those who loot our collective patrimonies are indiscriminate of right. parties. Those who mess up our collective morality All are right. indiscriminate of parties. So to fix Nigeria, we must be indiscriminate. All right, thank you parties. everyone for being a part of our show today. We will be back next week with fantastic episodes as usual. Do join us. Stay out of trouble. God bless Nigeria. And be patriotic. To enjoy more of these our Ogonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.